grace to you and peace. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm standing here in our sanctuary on this Friday morning, a sanctuary intentionally centered in the heart and soul of the beautiful and very resilient Heartside neighborhood. Today for our scripture passage, I want to just pull a couple verses from, from Sunday's gospel text and kind of tell that I'm in sermon writing mode. Um, I love the language of John 14, verse 18 and 19. Here it is, Jesus speaking to the disciples and also to us. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I will not leave you orphaned. Which is a different way of saying what Paul said in chapter 8 of his letter to the Romans. Nothing can separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Or of the image of the good shepherd, that that good shepherd, Jesus, will go out and, and find us wherever we go. Even if the one lost sheep is out, Jesus, as a good shepherd, will find it and bring us home. All of us being essential workers to God. All of us deeply loved. All of us worth everything to our maker and to our savior and to our sustainer. And for us, then, to continue to see the world through the eyes of our, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. To see every sheep as valuable. To see every orphan as someone valuable and, and desired to, to be brought into the arms of God's love. Every orphan, every alien, every widow, every stranger. There is none of us that are worthless or uh, replaceable. All of us are loved that deeply. Which is why the, the, the Christian church has put so much emphasis on, on orphanages. Even up to the fourth century, we can find um, evidence of these Christian orphanages, of folks taking these words of Jesus seriously, and making sure that no one else feels or experiences abandonment or not having a home. We find in the Middle Ages, the monastic communities took on these young children, even in the midst of the plague and economic downturn. Young children, those on the margins, were deeply valued and cared for. In Protestant uh, in the Reformation, we find evidence in, say, the Netherlands of individual congregations also having their own orphanage in these little small towns to make sure that young children uh, who were orphanage, who were, who were orphaned for various reasons, sickness, war, money, but various reasons they were cared for. The name, uh, that's Lutheran, French Lutheran pastor named Johann Oberlin, uh, the person whose name now is affixed to a college in Ohio. He created a whole system, a Christian community that, that really centered around caring for these young children who were orphaned, giving them the kind of quality of education and love and nurture that's needed. Here at Bethlehem Church, right, our intergenerational center that for, for decades has been caring for children, to nurture them well, to love them. Not necessarily orphans, but our children in our midst. And so for us to continue this emphasis on reaching out beyond ourselves to make sure that we not only say that no one else will be orphaned, but that we live that way for the widows, the orphans, the strangers, the aliens in our midst for those in hospital rooms, for those in care facilities, for those alone in their apartments. There are many in our midst. Those sitting in Heartside Park, those um, in huge mansions but very alone. There are various ways of being disconnected, not feeling loved, not being brought into uh, a, a community of acceptance, a community that centers fully in this kind of selfless love of Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to live into our own identity, to know that you will never be orphaned, no matter what, and that we have that great joy, that great obligation, that great responsibility to kind of be 
that good shepherd in our midst to, to continue to live that way so others may know how deeply they truly are loved. Let me end with a prayer from, uh, from our liturgy, from our, our hymn book in the beginning. Uh, it's on page 86 if you have a hymn book at home of our ELCA hymn book, and it's a prayer of commitment. Let us pray. Into your hands, almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves. Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps. Abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering Spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death in this world of shadows, and in your changeless world of light eternal, both now and forever. Amen. Grace and peace in Jesus Christ.